tis the season for Mother's Day, so happy Mo Mother's Day to all those special moms out there. Whether you're a mom mom or a grand mom or a dog mom or a cat mom, happy Mother's Day for all the work that you put in. We're gonna catch up with a few special moms on this show today, including my cases. But first, uh, we do wanna give you a bit of an update on a local company who has stepped up to the plate in a very big way for first, first responders when it comes to this COVID-19 virus. So we're gonna check in with um, some of our friends over at Winter Aviation. And of course, Beastar 1907, one of our favorite places. We're gonna give you an update on how they are getting ready to open their doors. And of course, the hospitality industry has come to a grinding halt, but that doesn't mean that they're gonna stay down for very long. Of course, we're gonna check in with John Miles and Steel Light International. Mike Case is standing by in Talmadge, Ohio, which is nowhere close to Boardman, Ohio. And we miss each other very much, and we've had a lot to do over the past few weeks. And uh, Michael, I can't wait to be able to be spending some time, you know, elbow to elbow again. So I'll let you take it away, okay? Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to my house. Valley Spotlight Extreme Home Edition continues on Mother's Day. We've never had a show that airs for the first time on Mother's Day, so we're a little bit Mother's Day centric on this one. Uh, we're gonna have a couple of things for you. I get to go out to Ann Julie's uh, fruit farm and talk to those folks about um, what happens when you get a plant for Mother's Day. Some belong inside, some belong outside. We wanna make sure we keep them as great as we can and flowering as we can for as long as we can. So we're gonna talk about that. Also for this Mother's Day, we're gonna have a visit from my mom who much like a lot of us, uh, her hair is not the all time best right now. Those are her words. So uh, she's gonna wear a hat in this episode and we might even see my brother uh, do a special Happy Mother's Day uh, sentiment as well. But first, I wanted to talk to you uh, a little about our eyes, especially our kids. You know, when uh, the governor said there was no more school for the rest of the year, that meant kids staying home and being on their computers and tablets and phones longer than they normally would be. I thought to myself, does that raise any problems, especially for young eyes? So we visited Dr. Alquist, an optometrist in Canfield, to find out. been an optometrist for about 16 years. Um, I practice in Canfield. I have an emphasis in my practice on pediatrics and ocular disease. Um, I'm a mother of three. So when everything came up this year in March that the kids would be out of school and learning from home with this, the distance learning, it's been a challenge um, having the kids all at home with me. But also I knew there would be some problems with moms and kiddos with their eyes. Um, everything's on the computers, the kids are getting their assignments and things, um, phones, computer screens. Everybody says, you know, Johnny's holding things this close to my face, yeah. or, you know, to his face. I'm concerned he can't see. So these are things we just want to um, kind of just help temper. Children have a tendency to just get really close to things. Mm -hmm. um, TVs when they're toddlers in elementary school. I mean, my middle schooler is still, you know, right in his phone or yeah. on the screen. So we want to try to push things back and be about arm's length away from the material that they're working on digitally. Um, we also just want to, I always go by the 20-20-20 rule. And that just means um, for every 20 minutes of our up close time spent on a computer or even reading in a book, um, you should take a 20 second break or more and look at something 20 feet or further away. Oh. So um, if you can remember that 20, 20, 20, it's huh. just a real quick way, even if you do like a quick stretch or something, just to mm -hmm. kind of give the kids a little bit of a break because all of us, our eyes are more comfortable, focused, mm -hmm. far away. So when our eyes converge, they both kind of turn in a little bit and that's to look at things up close and that can get strenuous. It's like flexing a muscle for a long period of time, it gets tired. So then kids start rubbing and mm -hmm. there's all kinds of issues. So just because your child holds something close does not mean that they need glasses, just to reassure people. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Okay. Um, my high schooler's on his computer six, eight, some days, 10 hours a day. And literally sure. he is just doing homework. So it's a huge concern and de you know demand for these kiddos. And with that comes another major concern. Um, parents have come up to me and asked about it. I've been concerned with my own children. Um, the blue light that is coming off of these screens. So um, blue light, I'm sure you've heard about it, but basically what it is is um, 
It comes from the sun, it comes from any LED screen, so computers, flat screen TVs, um, our phones, all of these things are emitting this blue light. And what's happening with that, um, studies are showing that we are kind of getting some issues in the retina. So here's a model of an eye, mm -hmm. and light is entering in through here in the front of the eye. It travels through the center of the eye and it hits the retina, which is the lining of the inside towards the back. And they're thinking that the blue light damages that part of the eye and the retina is what we need to see. So it almost acts like macular degeneration in older patients. Um, our concern is that our younger um, patients, our kiddos, when they're maybe only like, you know, early adulthood potentially could have some issues if they're having all this blue light. Mm -hmm. So it is a valid concern. Things we need to be careful about is um, when we stop using the devices per day. So they say roughly two hours before bedtime, it's a good idea to not be around blue light. Um, that's because it can mess with our circadian rhythms and that's when you, when your body feels like it's time to go to sleep and when it's time to wake up. Mm -hmm. So you wanna keep that in mind. Um, also, the the whole thing with... Um, Are there glasses or yes, something you can Yes, wear? there's filters that you can put on. Mm -hmm. um, you can potentially find filters that go over top of the computer. Mm -hmm. um, or I think this is more effective. We actually have special glasses that block out um, that kind of light. So they're usually just, they're clear, or they have a slight um, cast to it, a yellow cast, they're blue light filter. Um, it's a, like a special, kind of like, a not a film, but yeah. it, it's a coating that they put on the glasses. Um, I've had some patients say they pick some up at Amazon for 20 bucks. I don't know how effective those are. Uh -huh. um, they have little tests you can do to see how effective, what the quality of those are, but they any eye doctor has those also. So yeah. um, these are just some concerns. And of course, whenever a parent has um, any questions about their children's eyes or the development with their eyes, it's always a good idea to see your eye doctor. So um, we are all back and open, yeah. thank goodness, in May. Um, so hopefully getting back to a new normal. Um, I am in Canfield. I'd be more than happy to help anybody who needs um, a consult. Um, you can reach me on the phone, 330-702-EYES, or on my website at Alquist, and that's A-H-L-Q-U-I-S-T, iCare.com. Thanks, Dr. Alquist, located right off 224 uh, Manor Hill Drive in Canfield, not too far from Route 11. All right, when we come back, uh, we'll visit with Mark Canzanetta a little bit and Lauren at Bistro 1907, see what they're doing during these tough times and how things might get a little bit better. More Valley Spotlight after this. Baby, you got some big feet. We you get shoes for those feet? I buy them at Ryers, of course. They have all sizes, even for me. They're always tax-free and located in beautiful downtown Sharon. are selling fast, who can ensure you'll get the most money for yours? I'm Barbara Corcoran, and I've managed agents who have sold homes for thousands of dollars over list price. The key is to hire the agent with a smart, aggressive marketing plan. In the Mahoney Valley, no agent spends more marketing dollars and creates demand quite like Kelly Warren. Her marketing attracts hundreds of buyers every month and allows her to offer a buyout plan as well as flexible fees. Go to kellysolda.com and get top dollar for your home. Welcome back to Valley Spotlight. I do have to admit, I need to make an eye doctor appointment like, like today because I literally cannot see anything. If anything, being at home has given me um, a really good grasp on what I can and cannot see. So Michael, Dr. Alquist, thank you so much. Um, as we all sort of gear up for the world to hopefully get back to a more normal place, uh, Mark Canzanetta and his very special team out there at Bistro 1907 have taken it very seriously to get that restaurant looking good and completely sanitized. So Mark has an update for us from inside of Bistro 1907. 
Hey everybody, it's Market Bistro 1907. As you can see, I have work going on. We are being COVID sanitized right now. Every table, every chair. The restaurant has been completely steam sanitized from top to bottom. I'm just walking around showing everybody. We miss you all, by the way. Uh, just wanted to show you what we have going on here at Bistro. And the place is surgically clean, in my opinion. And we are re ready and willing and uh, waiting to reopen up whenever the governor and Dr. Acton gives us their heads up. Everything is covered. Everything has been sterilized. Everything has been cleaned. As you can see, every work surface has been you know, sanitized and wrapped. And the floors are immaculate. We've gotten in every corner, every crevice of this restaurant. Where, uh, you know, I brought some key staff members in to help us out with that. And I just wanted everybody to see. We're going to walk back into the kitchen. You know, it's been a long, I think we're on day 49 officially of the uh, COVID outbreak. And we are just being patient and we wanted to make sure that our staff has been safe. So we've been completely shut down. We haven't had anything open. But as you can see, the kitchen is ready to be fired back up. We're anxiously awaiting so we can get cooking again. Again, every surface has been completely sanitized, sterilized. We're walking through. And we're just anxious to get this thing started again. I know it's been a long time since we've seen a lot of you. We miss you being here in downtown Youngstown. So just to see what's going on, you can see the, the gentlemen that are sanitizing for us, spraying all the floors, all the table surfaces, all the tables, legs, surfaces that anybody would touch are being sanitized. You know, it's just been, it's been really sad and heartbreaking that we haven't been able to be open in wonderful downtown Youngstown here. See the dining room, we're all ready and prepared. Every light bulb has been cleaned. Every, everything has been dusted again, sanitized. You know, there's that great mural that we had painted before we opened, actually chalked. That's chalk. We're gonna go upstairs. And seeing all the carpets have been steam cleaned. We're just really looking forward and anxious to see what the governor and Dr. Acton has to say on when we'll be allowed to reopen because we're really looking forward to it. It's such a beautiful restaurant. We're just really looking forward to the reopening of this place, getting her back fired up, taking care of downtown Youngstown and all the surrounding communities. Um, it's gonna be a different time opening up the restaurant. We may have some uh, breakdown in the food chain. We might have to have you know, a, a menu that's gone by on a weekly basis. We might have to be changing some things uh, in anticipation of some food shortages. But as you know, everything will be the highest quality that we can possibly get and we are just going to rock and roll as soon as we get back to business so um, we look forward to it and that's about it youngstown ohio and the surrounding communities really big heads up and thank you to all hard work from my staff members that helped me so and friends that helped me we really did a lot of painstaking work to get bistro detailed back for for COVID. so we're ready we look forward to serving you and you guys, you'll know on our social media, Lauren will get in contact with you guys. So we look forward to seeing you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye. All right. It's been good to see you. And uh, we'll check in with you again when that place opens up again. It has been tough on the restaurants. And it's been tough on Steel Light, too. In this edition of Perfectly Plated, we visit with John Miles, with Lauren, and find out what they're doing to keep things rolling in these uncertain times. Well, this edition of Perfectly Plated, we don't have any plates per se in front of us, but we do have John Wiles and CEO of Steel Light to give us an update as to what this important company has been up to over these past few very difficult weeks. And, you know, masks are on, we're working from home, so thank you for inviting us, and we'll try to 
keep the distance even though it's it's hard not to give you a hug because we we miss our friends we miss our family and we miss eating with them don't we we sure do and we sure as a business miss everyone out eating at restaurants but you know we are where we are and um you know at steelite we uh have followed all the statutory requirements and have had most of our people not working for over the last call it six weeks um you know, in the end, um, we hope to see customers start to return to restaurants and restaurants start to operate again and to get back into somewhat of the groove that we'd become so accustomed to. Now, here um, in the state of Pennsylvania, there are one, there's one set of rules. And then in the state of Ohio, there's a different set of rules. And of course, you're an international company. So how does your team and how do you, as somebody who's leading them, make you know, the best calls based on how everybody is sort of interpreting so much information so differently? Um, you know, we seek professional opinions and uh, we've got great attorneys and great support from our private equity sponsor, Arbor, mm -hmm. who's got a, a great group of internal people to kind of help us. And, you know, we go out and we, we, we look for good advice um, first and foremost, we're thinking about the safety of our employees and our team members and um, customers. And you know that for us is, is tantamount to, to any business. And then after that, looking for ways to kind of approach um, the, the market and re-engage as we best can. Right, well, one would think that to re-engage means you just don't jump all the way back in. It's sort of like the scaling back up. And for somebody like you, you know, you like to go 110 miles an hour, so I would imagine that this situation is not the most comfortable. No, it's terrible. Uh, I mean, listen, we would, um, we've had a very fast growing, um, very consistent business for a quarter of a century. So when something like this comes and derails, and for us, this has been even much worse than 9-11 or the Great Recession in 08 and 09. I mean, all of our customers are closed. Um, but you know, I am very, very confident that if you think about the people in the restaurant business, in the hotel business, hardworking, tenacious, great people that always find a solution. And listen, it's hard in this business any day. Right. On, a, on a good day, it's hard. So, you know, those people are accustomed to overcoming adversity and uh, I'm, I'm really confident that it will be slow and it will be hard, but we will be back. Well, I have to admit, like I am always impressed by the creativity and the way that you guys have the ability to really understand what your clients and your customer base needs. And you guys have new um, online uh, you know, versions of being able to interact with the showroom space. Yep. You guys are really doing a good job of getting your information out there where it's very safe. And I just have to say, like, we're going to show a bit of it here for people to sort of see how those, you know, pinpoints are moving. And it's remarkable to see you guys, you know, sort of literally um, step up to the plate, even if there's no plate. Yeah. I mean, listen, uh, it, we love what we do mm -hmm. and we believe that what we do is going to change. But we also believe that there's, there's a big future for what we do. And um, adapting and investing is, is, is all part of it. And you guys are, of course, still right here in Youngstown and in Western Pennsylvania. And we're just happy to have you as such a huge advocate of ours to support such great businesses. So thank you, John, and it's good to see you. And well, next time we see each other, hopefully we'll be able to give each other a hug and have a meal. How about that? Great to see you as always, Lauren. <laughs> thank you. Sure thing. Thank you. No hot water? Call A to Z Dependable Services. Our fully stocked rapid response water heater specialist will get you back in hot water in no time. A to Z is the only call you need to make. Only A to Z the time is now. Steel Valley Lifts knows you deserve the best car lift for our best price. Double your garage space with lifts starting at just $39.95. Steel Valley Lifts. We hold firm on American values. The strongest steel and the strongest workforce make the safest lifts. Call our skilled service team today and find out why our customers have been with us since 1988. Trust is built on strength. Visit SteelValleyLifts.com and trust us to lift you in the future. Christine Dental is accepting patients of all ages. We understand your needs during this difficult time. We'll be following public health mandates by offering one-on-one -on -one provider to patient care. Appointment times will be extended in order to sanitize before and after each session. And there's no need to wait inside our office. One of our staff members will welcome you into our building for your appointment as you wait safely in your vehicle. 
protective gowns and eyewear will be provided. Your health and safety is our priority. Call and book your appointment at Pristine Dental today. Doesn't that look pretty? Mother's Day is upon us, and I'm sure a lot of people have bought presents like this for mom. So we thought we'd come to Ann Julie's Farm Market, visit with Carl a little bit, put our masks down for just a few minutes to talk about plants and what to do if you got your mom a plant, you want to keep it as nice as you can for as long as you can, right, yes, Carl? Yes, right, right. So, so we, we, we got, got a couple of different kinds here. Let's start with these. These are some that you could buy now, but then put them in the yard later, right? Correct. So you got yourself, uh, we got three pots here. We would suggest uh, you follow in the tags of what <clears throat> the, the plant requires for sunlight or shade. Okay. And then they can stay in the pots for uh, another week or so just based on the, uh, the weather. That's, yeah. that's very important. You, a lot of these are tender crops, so they will get frosted if they get too cold. You got to be careful. It's yeah. a guessing game, but you really got to be careful yeah. with these because you don't want to put them out and then they're gone, right? Right, right. So, How do you do it? Just pop them right out yeah, of that thing? Yeah, we're just going to just take this, you know, you can squeeze it, pull it out, and then make your hole in your flower beds and just drop it in. And you're good to go. And you're good to go. All right. What about these? You could plant these, right? Right. These, you could do the same thing. You could pull the handles off and then you could put these in your flower beds or if you want just you know hang it on the front porch yeah you know this particular one will take full sun porch shade so that's excellent uh, mother's day gift that how, you receive. how often does mom need to water one of these once they do put them outside yeah i would check it i would check it at least every other day okay right now and then later in the summertime you know it might be every day just okay. depending on what the, the weather is like if it's a lot of heat you know you're going to require a lot more water here are some that kind of stay in the house right yes okay what do we have in the front so in the front here we have these uh, some succulents mm -hmm. we, they can just keep these all year um, in by a window obviously and then this, there's a little planter here you can do something with you like it inside if not you can transplant those but those succulents require a lot more shade if they're in the outdoors okay and these how long will these be good if you keep them in the house um, these by the window will keep uh, a good season, I would say, you know, we're just talking summer seasons as long as it's full sunlight. Okay. Nice sunroom. They'll continue to grow with a little bit of water and fertilizer. Very good. And we're going to talk about the fertilizer in a second. Now we have a tropical one. This is a little more dicey, right? Oh, yeah. Got to well, be careful. Be careful. You know, this is a, a Florida plant, you know, so summer times are kind of like Florida here, but we also have a lot more colder weather. So they're more susceptible to the frost, the freeze. The, uh, the Northeast Ohio weather. And, and the deer. I will tell you, the deer. deer love these at my house. Yes, uh, yeah, well. <laughs> All right, well, that's how it goes, is, right? That's how it is. So. All right, let's talk fertilizer. Different kinds for different plants, right? Right. So we have a um, the, the red fertilizer is great for your petunias, your million bells, uh, things that are, it's a little bit more acidic. Uh, and then the red, the blue is gonna be your multi-purpose. You can use that on your house plants, your outdoor plants, your vegetable gardens, your tropicals. I wasn't sure that you would fertilize the ones that stay indoors. Yes, they still would need a little bit. Now, they don't require as much, but they still do need the fertilizer. Um, outdoors, obviously, I would say at least once a week. Indoors, you could get away two to three weeks, depending on the requirements of the plant. All That's right, moms, there you go. You got to keep your plants great when you get them for a gift for Mother's Day. Thank you, Carl. Good You're job. Welcome. Thank you. And Julie's Farm Market, located here on 46, just south of town, and south of Canfield a little bit. They're open seven days a week. Well, Carl and Mike, thank you so much. And the Anjuli family always doing such a good job when it comes to our produce, produce and those beautiful baskets. My gosh, guys, looking really, really good. And thank you for doing what you do for all the moms out there. Speaking of moms, Kelly Warren, she is one of the best. She's also one of the best real estate agents around. She is gonna tell us exactly how that they've been conversing with clients and customers alike. Well, this week on Home Advantage with our lovely Kelly Warren, we are uh, catching up with her over FaceTime in, in my house. And uh, Kel, this is kind of like the way of the world right now. How are you doing? I'm good. This is oddly that new normal that everybody's talking about. Yes, it is. And it, it, it's, it's, uh, it is a season for, for Mother's Day and, and you are yeah. a mom balancing so much. How's yeah. it going, sister? 
it's going it's going we're just um adjusting you know making the best of what, what we have the best that you can so when it comes to your real estate agents when it comes to your wonderful team uh, I would I would assume that this kind of technology and being able to connect with your clients and your customers that this is kind of like a godsend huh being able to do this it is you know none of us saw this coming and this is just insane you know never in my life did I think we'd be doing this but it's a great time I guess to be doing it had this happened to us you know in the 90s we wouldn't have the technology to do it right, so this is true. Um, yeah, at least we can do what we can do now. So are people comfortable with it or is it something that you have to like really get people to understand? I know that, uh, you know, my mother, my mom, you know, was able to do the FaceTiming with you from a million miles away and bought a house that she never even saw, only basically using this kind of stuff. But she, that's not the norm, is it? Most people are not comfortable with no. that. <laughs> no, it's not the norm. Um, you know, the initial consultation with clients, they don't mind this at all. They get to put a face to the name and we can talk through their needs and their wants and that kind of stuff. Um, at first showing, they are comfortable with this. They get to see if the house, you can really rule out a house through yeah. the FaceTime and the virtual tours and stuff like that. But then a lot of our buyers are still wanting to physically see the home, which we can do with all the safety procedures um, to actually show them the property you know, before they make a final purchase too. Well, I would imagine that those are um, probably coming through the door pretty quickly. I understand that, you know, that we've, we've visited the topic before that, you know, right. real estate's pretty safe. It's still a very safe investment despite, you know, some of the turmoil that's going on with the economy and so on and so forth. Are you feeling that in a local, at a local level? And what kinds of properties do you feel like are really popular because of the time that we're in? Um, the market has been moving well, so even though it hasn't hit that busy spring season that we would have hit in April, um, I think we'll still see that in the next month or two. It'll pick back up to normal, but it's still been a busy market. Homes are still selling, and like a, you know, some hit the market and they're sold in a day or two. We like some of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, I mean, it, we were in such a strong market before this hit that that it, we've been fortunate. Um, as for what's selling, investment properties are great, of course. Um, single family residential in different price points in different areas, very hot. So well, We wanted to stay hot. We want you to stay safe. We, yes. we uh, can't wait to see you in person. So tell everybody at home how they can get a hold of you and your team. It's pretty easy. You guys pick up cell phones. You guys pick up the text message. I got to say, I hand it to you. They can call or text us at 330-717-2689 or visit us online at kellysolid.com. You're the best, Kel. We miss you. Air hug, okay? You. Miss you too. And the air hug you through the computer. Yeah. All right. Yeah. See you later. Bye. Well, several months ago, we had the pleasure of catching up with a lady CEO, a lady leader over at Winter Aviation, and she's also one heck of a mom, but she has also one heck of a vision for what's happening at Winter Aviation. After we show you this story one more time, we'll have an update on how they're really pulling together for first responders when it comes to this COVID-19 virus. There's just something romantic about it. Taking off into the sky, eye to eye with the world, it takes vision. And for Winter Aviation, they are focusing on maintenance and safety. Their vision for the future. I've been here less than nine months. Um, there were four divisions when I came and now there are two. But we are getting ready to start a new one. So we had a charter flight division and it's just a little difficult in this area, in this market, and um, it wasn't making money. It, and it was a very tough decision because everybody involved is extremely passionate about that one. So with private jet service being on hold at Winter Aviation, it does not mean that the people who consider it home are not busy. Winter Aviation has been ruling the skies for decades, and they are still upholding a level of service that has stood the test of time. This highly specialized team is highly sought after when it comes to aviation maintenance. Safety is our number one priority. The skills demand an appreciation for the industry and how truly remarkable taking flight is. Tom Law looked at the opportunity at Winter Aviation as a way to soar, and so does the team he helps manage. We're all certified mechanics here. Any, anybody can't just come work on an airplane, you have to go to school for it and get, you get a license from the, from the government and you maintain currency in that too. So everybody here has got their FAA certification, it's called an airframe, airframe power plant certificate. 
Uh, we maintain the highest standards per the FAA, per the government. His role and skill set is helping fuel the evolution of what winter aviation is becoming. They will have three divisions that cover ground handling, maintenance, and avionics. Meg Bianco, a Liberty native, made the decision to join professional forces with Rick Hale, a longtime friend. Rick's love for his company and the industry run deep. And I started out sweeping floors in this hangar right here as a 19-year-old trying to break into aviation. Years later, Rick is still finding ways to help push winter aviation forward, and now Meg is here to help guide the way. The reason why she's here is she has a skill set that this company needed to make the transition I'm looking for. So uh, she uh, agreed to come on board, and we've been restructuring ever since, and uh, the future's looking brighter all the time. Her mindset and approach to guiding this company into the future is already helping to evoke excitement in new ways. From her perspective, the horizon is bright. The way I always see things is, if one door closes, there's at least two or three that have an opportunity to open up and take us into the future in a bigger way. And just a couple of weeks ago, that entire team out there at Winter Aviation, you saw their leadership team. Well, they pulled together to make sure that the first responders at St. Joe's Hospital, well, they had a great meal thanks to the Outback Steakhouse in Niles, Ohio. And of course, Handel's ice cream was served. So, you know, it's good to see the people behind some of the greatest events and some of the ways that this community pulls together. And wonderful to see them coming together for the people who are on the front lines of all of this. And uh, just a big thanks because we're glad to have been able to share your story and to continue to share those stories with you. So stay with us, more Valley Spotlight, in just a few moments. And she would always say, honey, I, you snore so loud, I, I can't believe how loud you snore. And I'm like, what? And he claims I quit breathing. I've tried four different masks to make it work, and I just can't do it. And I'll be honest with you, I did not know what REM sleep felt like, like before too. the appliance. I really did not. I, it, I never had that deep of a sleep before. Well, Ducat not only sells the product, but we service them. We have parts and service support for every machine that you buy at Ducut. Um, you are purchasing a machine, it's eventually going to break or need work, and we are here to do that. Uh, you don't get that from an online sale or a mass merchant. They just don't have the ability to have the parts and the service. We send our mechanics to school every year. We have two Briggs & Stratton master service technicians. There are not many in the country, probably less than 5,000 in the country, and we have two at Ducut. And we also have gold certified steel mechanics uh, and numerous certifications in parts and service for, for every brand that we carry. So let yourself go to do cut. Let yourself go to do cut. Sweeney is here to make your buying experience safe and easy. Only at Sweeney. Save 25% off MSRP on the 2020 Chevy Equinox or Trax. Or save 25% off MSRP on the 19 Chevy Silverado. Or save 20% off the new 2020 Chevy Blazer. Shop from home at SweeneyCars.com or stop by Sweeney Chevrolet Buick GMC. On Market Street in Boardman. Yes, let's Why don't go we get cook started with the uh, Klopson? Klopson, yeah, Klopson. Yes, Königsberg, Klopson. Klopson means meatball. Meatball, okay. okay. And Königsberg is, like I said before, it's a town in Germany. So, but I, you know what, I made it easy for myself and I bought some meatball mix from, from the store. Oh, is that yeah. okay? No, I think we all try to find some easy way to get it around things. Yeah, and you and know the what? the local butchers? Yes. And uh, this is a little loose, so what I like to do is I, I tried it at home. It needs a little bit of more, um, I'm pretty sure it's in there, you know, um, breadcrumbs. So they didn't quite mix it to your liking. Yeah, yeah. Right. And my mom, she always snuck in some 
anchovy paste. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just a little bit, but I think I'm gonna leave it out. I don't know how you you're gonna have to eat it, you know. So do you like it or not? So I'm gonna leave it I out. I actually would but like it, but like I know it? what you mean. Not everybody does, no, but no. it blends in. You don't really taste the anchovy. That, that's in there, true. Do you? Okay, then let's put like maybe half a teaspoon in. I and talked no, you into it. Yes, Wolfgang right. loved it too. We won't <laughs> tell anybody, and I bet you they don't even know it. No, you don't notice. It gives us such a nutty flavor. You yeah. Know? Sometimes yeah. I'll put it into a nice rich tomato sauce. Yeah. And if you don't tell people, it just it, it acts as like a salt. Yeah, you know? it does not taste. I mean, not fishy at all. No. Okay, I think this is getting good. And now what we do is we mix the meatballs. And you know what? I'm going to roll those little balls up here. You can go put a bay leaf in here. It's, bay it's leaf right a, in can here? Can you turn it down? Yeah. Yeah, sure. This is actually one uh, carton of chicken broth. And we use a bay leaf and we use some peppercorns. How many peppercorns go in there? Ten of them. Ten? Mm-hmm. And see, I'm just... So I just want, one bay leaf? A nice big yeah, bay leaf? Yeah. Just take another one. Yeah? Yeah, one more. And uh, I washed my hands. So and do you want me to crush these or they go right in like that? They go right in like that. Right. And you know what is unusual? The meatballs, look, they get rolled in. So you roll them in flour. Yeah, and then that makes the sauce then a little... Uh, Thicker, you know. Do you need a plate to put these no, into? No, you're going to put them right in the sauce. So put these right in right there. Right in now? there. That's okay, we don't need, need to get them all ready first. Or? No, that's that. They're all ready. So, just so I got to watch though. This one's going to cook first, right? <laughs> that's okay, because they have to cook about 15 minutes. I'll just get them rotating over here. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's what I do. So you test you, them by, for, yeah, for yeah, their firmness, yeah, or you, you mark your. You your know what? Pot. You cannot overcook. Okay, you don't overcook a meatball. Have you ever had an overcooked meatball? Uh, no, I don't <laughs> like to overcook meatball no, because know. they lose all their juice, right? Well, that's well, But here this. you're cooking them in juice, so yeah, they're so absorbing they're fine, more. Yeah, they're fine, yeah. And the, the flour kind of keeps the stuff, keeps it in, you know? Now, they're supposed to be like golf ball size, but this is a little bigger. Yeah. Because we want to get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's one of Alpha's tricks, everybody. <laughs> you might not feed as many people, but they're going to eat a big meatball. <laughs> you know, my kids always said, Oh, there's mom again. The meatballs are not the same. The, 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 on the end, they always got bigger. <laughs> so mom to <laughs> As you get towards the end. Yeah. yeah. Well, I do that with cookie so, yeah. dough sometimes. Sure, yeah. sure. I so, think it's just psychoschematic, you know. How many do we have? They're usually for a pound of uh, meat, uh, ball mix. You get about um, 10 meatballs. Okay. Is it about 10? 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. Almost 11 and a small one. There we are. So you went the opposite way. You didn't end up with one big one at the end. Uh, it's one yeah. small one. <laughs> That's what's the life speed of Okay, that way, and it? now what we do is we eat, we're going to make a caper sauce, see? And so, uh, where do we have this little? Okay. Now we're oh, going to. I like the small capers. Yeah. Now we're going to go put in. <laughs> it's hot. It is hot. One. And just a little bit. That's about okay. a teaspoon, three teaspoons. Mm -hmm. A little extra flour. Let's see. There's something else is going to go in. A little, uh, like a quarter cup. It's just this a, a, cider, a vinegar. cider vinegar. That's about, huh? You yeah. think? I like the way you eyeball that. That's yeah, okay. And here comes the goodies. Uh, I Julia can't Child this. used to keep these around too, just Do like you? that, right? <laughs> okay, we're going to measure this. I have you a see, cup. I've had practice. Yes, you do. A half a cup of white wine. White is wine. It one, does it need to be a Riesling like that one? That's a Riesling, yeah. Any any kind of wine. White yeah. wine or mm -hmm. a sweeter. Yeah. So, and then later on, we're going to add some sour cream. And we have to go zest a lemon. And I want you, this is a little bit, I Soft. don't know, that zest yeah, is a little yeah. big. Can you kind well, of chop this a little finer for me? Sure thing, yeah. What do you need, a couple of teaspoons of lemon? That should be enough, here. Yeah. And then we just throw that in. That's good. And we're gonna go and half the lemon and just squeeze a half a lemon in there. Just half. Because I did a whole one and Wolfie said do it was... Have, you don't want pits. Do we, do we need a strainer? You, all you have to do is go like this. Come on, you show us. Okay. Look closely here. She's getting all the pits. <laughs> there you go. See, all the pits are in here in my hand. Okay. German techniques. <laughs> okay, now. Let's uh, see what they, how they're doing. 
Okay, so how long is this? 15? Yeah, that should be 15 minutes now. Yeah, and the meatballs are not really looking pretty. But wait till you taste it, then you, you say, hmm, they, that tastes pretty good. They smell good. wonderful, I'll tell you. <laughs> I really like the, uh, the lemon and the caper. Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna go use some sour cream. We're gonna go put in uh, about uh, half a cup. We're gonna whisk that in whisk there. Whisk that right in there. Mmm, that looks good. It smells amazing. Yeah. Take it up nice and, and smooth. The lemon. Mm-hmm. And you know, and then we're gonna we kind of cream it just a little bit with um, cornstarch because. It, it's a little, little loose, isn't it? Yep. Were well, you going to mix a little of the liquid with it? Yeah. Okay, now we're going to go use a little bit of the juice, I mean the broth, for my cornstarch. See, we need yeah, a more. caper sneak in there. Yes, that's okay. That's going to all go in there. Okay, now take the whisk. the meatballs back in. Whew, okay. Now all that has to just kind of cook out the Get all starch those a little. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll let that About simmer another in there. A five minutes or so and then we're gonna have some potatoes and so they put them right over some boiled potatoes. So you boiled the potatoes yes. already. Okay. And all we're right. gonna use my mom always had a, a pickle with that in the winter time. A nice, you know, a dill pickle, mm-hmm. and in the summertime we use tomato salad. So yeah. guess what we having today with it? I don't know what time. Tomato of, salad. What time of year are we? <laughs> summertime. <laughs> okay, now see how nice and thick this this sauce is now. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then all it needs is a little parsley which you cut. That we're chopped. gonna we're gonna garnish that right on the plate. And then we're going to garnish up a tomato salad and we all set to eat. How do you like that? I'm ready to eat. Okay. I'm hungry. Okay, Mitch. Now I added a little bit more cracked peppercorns. Okay, okay. I see you and cut up some of the Yes, potato. and then we the potatoes. And this is the way at home. That's how my mom served it, okay? With the caper sauce. Pretty, yeah. You know, doesn't it look good? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it's for you. Yeah. I can't wait till you taste it and see if you like it. I think I can taste it through my nose. Already. Do you? <laughs> I know it, it really comes nice. Okay, here we go. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> try a little potato in the sauce. Mm. Yeah, we always break up the potato to soak up the sauce, you know? Oh, yeah. And a little That's bit of this. Beautiful. Hot, hot, hot. Mmm. Mm. Good? Mmm. Mmm. That's a really nice you ta- flavor. You taste the, the, the wine? It, these are light too. This, this meat mixture light? is a very nice mixture. I know. And the, uh, the anchovy taste, the paste, you don't taste, do you? No. I actually like anchovy when it cooks into something. Mm-hmm. You don't really taste the fish. It's more about the salt. And then you have some uh, some tomato, uh, tomato slices with that, a salad. So this would go, this would be... On the side, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. So, yeah. so what we're going to do now, we're going to go put them all in a bowl. Uh, can I eat a little more? Yes, you can. <laughs> and I guess we have All to right. go Back kind to of say goodbye, huh? Oh, you want to do that first? Okay. Don't rush the audience. They want to hang out oh, with us for okay. a while. <laughs> See, we're always See too the, short to you know show what? at home. Like there, the meatballs, you. really, they don't really look good, do they? Because they don't stay a little round. They stay a little bumpy looking, you know? But, but that looks like home style. They, I just want to say they look very home style. I mean, that's what we're talking about here, right? Right. This is home style. Um, let's see, put a little bit I'm more gonna, sauce over. I'm going to use one of my chef tricks right here. I was using the hands. And now we're going to put a little parsley over the that. The thumb comes in handy, see? It's better ah, than a spatula. Yes, okay. <laughs> and All right, so we're going to garnish that with the, some of that parsley. Yes. I can't touch it now. I cross yeah. contaminate. Now, look at this. Now, isn't this beautiful? Let's see. We, we kind of messed up too. There we go. Now, what time of oh, year? Oh, that looks Is this nice. a particular time of year that they would have this? Well, like I told you, in the winter time, we got a pickle with it. My mom made it in the winter time. Or in the summertime, you have a fresh salad with it, you know? Oh. And you can make the meatballs with pork, with chicken, 
or with just beef or all three, veal. Well, pork, people beef. that want to be more healthy, they want to yeah. eat a chicken or a white meat, yeah. you know. Because they used to use a lot of veal, but not a lot of people like to use veal. Okay, so I'm glad you like it, and I think we I'm have to say goodbye. Some more, no? Okay, we have to say goodbye. Yes. Yeah, goodbye. Bye bye now. Happy to see Those look pretty good, didn't they? All right, good job, you guys. Thank you very much. Uh, a lot has been made on the fact that we need to wash our hands. It seems like the last three, four months, that's all anybody's been talking about, to stay safe, wash your hands. Is there a proper way to do it? Well, and what about the soaps you use? Let's visit with Sarah and her helpful household hints and hacks and find out a little bit more. <music> From Sarah's cleaning. I am getting so hot. I want to take my robe off. I actually do take my robe off. Um, I am still COVID cleaning. Um, I am COVID uh, clean certified as well as OSHA certified. Um, but I take my mask off when I get home. I do take my robe off. However, I spray it down with this micro band <laughs> before I do. But just to be safe. Take it off. Then I wash my hands, of course, with my gloves. Um, safe glove procedure is to take off your glove one at a time. It takes a little bit of extra time, but it's worth it. But anyways, take off my gloves. Then I take my, I do have a beta soap that I use as a hand soap for my bar, but that's my 20 second hand soap. If I want a little bit of extra mo moisturizing, I use bath water. Me and my fancy little holder, but pump soap is good. Any soap is good, honestly, guys. Um, any soap is good if you foam it up for the kids. Foam it up, Chris. I'm about to foam it up, Chris. That's what I was born to do. But you take your hands, craftily wash them up for 20 seconds, then. After 20 seconds, like I said, this a beta bar soap. The key is that hot, soapy water, guys. Um, and what you want to do, soap, just stay in there, wash the hands. But yeah, you want to bust the move while you wash your hands. Take that. Ow. Wipe off your hands. Then for a little added relief, what I do is put my Aveda hand cream on. I put it on underneath my gloves too when I go out. Um, again, I am COVID clean um, and OSHA certified. We are cleaning uh, 234-600-7251. Our uh, priorities right now are COVID. Unfortunately, I did receive a message uh, about uh, COVID cleaning, um, businesses, preschools, uh, restaurants, please contact me, 234-600-7251. I will happily put my N95 on, mask it up, Chris. I'm about to mask it up, Chris. That's what I was born to do. But yeah, I will mask up for anybody that needs a COVID clean, 234-600-7251. Um, my helpful hit and hack, not to panic, but to wash your hands. Hot soapy water, 20 seconds. Kids, you can do this at home, please do. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, uh, email. Best way to get a hold of me right now is 234-600-7251. In the meantime, I'm gonna go COVID clean a preschool. Have a great day, guys. Uh, stay safe, stay clean, and go Buckeyes! It's always good to see a mom who is in such great spirits and taking some of the simplest things so seriously. I know sometimes it's tough to get my five-year-old to really wash her hands and to do it the right way. So tips on that, Sarah, thank you so much. She's a great mama and a great cleaner. We're glad to have her. So stay with us. More of this very special home edition of Valley Spotlight continues and Mike has a bit more for us. I can't wait. Well, today's episode airs on Mother's Day 2020, so we thought we'd take time out and do a little Mother's Day tribute. Now, I have two moms that we adore in my life. The first is Mario and Natalia's mom. Her name is Shelly, and she's holding the camera right now. So, 
Give me one word to describe your mom, remembering that she is holding the camera right in front of you. <laughs> what is it? Helpful. Helpful is a good one. How about for you? Smart. Both good. Um, let me tell you about her. Now, there's no manual when you have a child, so you're really not sure what to do, but there is one unwritten rule, and that's to put the child ahead of you, and that's what their mom does, and she's always done it. She does absolutely everything for this family and just about every family in the group, so uh, we want to thank mom for her uh, for outstanding momship, and we want to wish her a... Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Will you say it, please? Happy Mother's Day. Very good. All right, now, let's get to the second mom in my life. That's my mom, their grandma. Her name is Rita. She had two sons. I was first. My brother Dave was second. Now, all through life, I got to do everything first because I was the oldest. But today, we're going to let Uncle Dave have the first word, and he's going to say Happy Mother's Day to Grandma. I know what you're thinking. Did Mike get stung by like a thousand bees? No. This is his favorite brother, Dave, sending this in because I can't be there in person. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I hope you have a great day. Make yourself some nice brunch and pretend I made it for you and then have Mike clean it up. He needs to do that for you. And then sit back and relax and binge watch all the back episodes of Valley Spotlight, especially that one where Mike goes in the car wash. That one always cheers me up. I hope you have a great day. Bye. Oh, then Uncle Dave. That may or may not be his first and final time on Valley Spotlight, I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, he's right. Uh, my mom, their grandma, one of their many grandmas, is fantastic. Uh, let me tell you about my mom. Um, she's kind. She cares. She was an educator, so she taught us the, uh, the, va the value of education. She likes to... Um, she likes to play games. Doesn't she like to play games, you guys? Mm -hmm. yeah. She likes to write a good thank you note. It's very important. We could all take a lesson from that. Mm -hmm. She loves a good meal. She likes to visit. She likes to watch a ball game uh, in person more than on TV. Uh, she's a fantastic cook. Am I right about that? Mm -hmm. She buys presents just for fun sometimes, even for me. And uh, she's done everything for our family for years and years and years. And we can't thank her enough for all that she's done. She is what I think is the best mom out there. So uh, thank you to her. I hope she has a happy Mother's Day. So we pulled her aside and asked her what it's like to have two ornery boys as a mom. And maybe one thing that she always tried to remember as uh, she was being a mom to us. So what's it like having Dave and Mike as your sons? Yeah. <laughs> and what you always tried to do, if there was one thing you always tried to do, what was it? Well, to have two little boys less than a year apart is just crazy. And so there was nothing, we, we had to keep them. I mean, that's it. So we did. And I think I'm, I'm lucky that I have a husband who's also crazy. And I think that's what our family was like through the years and then many people have said we're a fun family and it's because of those two little kids that kept us going. They played sports all year round. We were running all year round. We didn't go on vacations. That was our vacation to go to the ball games. And I had the whitest pants in the little league on my two boys. <laughs> I won, I won that. Um, that should be said. That was me, yeah. So what else can I tell you? Was no. there one thing? One thing? That you always tried to remember? One thing I remembered was something that, that happened to me when I was growing up. Um, my dad didn't think it was important. Birthdays weren't important. They're important to me. And our boys' birthdays are less than a year apart. One's the 8th, one's the 10th, and my husband's the 19th. I made sure everybody had their own birthday cake because I think your birthday is your day. Nobody else should have. We're celebrating you, and I think that's important. So I still do that. I still think your birthday is important, and we should celebrate it any way we can. There are so many awesome things I want to say about my mom, and I, we only we don't have the time. We only have so much time with this program. So say Happy Mother's Day to Grandma and all the other moms out there right now. Ready? Go. Happy Mother's Day. All right. Speaking of moms, great moms great daughters, a great friend. Let's send it over to Lauren and see what she and Sabina are up to. All right. 
Well, it is the season for Mother's Day, and I think it's Mother's Day all year round, especially when I am so lucky to have my Sabina Rosalina all the time. So, Sabina, thanks for making me a mom. I love you very much. <laughs> all right, so we have three grandmas that we love more than anything in the whole world. What are their names, Bean? Um, Grandma Loretta and Grandma Kathy and Anna. Jenny. Yeah, and we have Grandma Kathy living not too far from us now, and Grandma Loretta too. Nana Jenny's back in Chicago. But why don't you tell everybody at home what your favorite thing about Grandma Loretta is? Well, my favorite thing is about her. She um, lets me sleep in my bed with her, not in the big chunky one. Aunt Liz's is really comfy, and she lets me stay up late and eat my favorite cereal, and she... She um, puts the electric blanket on in the bed. That's nice. about Grandma. That's about Grandma. What about Grandma Kathy? What's your favorite thing about Grandma Kathy? She plays tennis with me, and she lets me eat like some of those taco sweets, and she lets me stay over for dinner, and she lets me sleep over whenever I want to. That is the best. And what about Nana Ginny? We've taken lots of trips to Florida with her, right? You do that one, Mama. Oh, I well, I would have to say that that is one of my favorite things, the fact that Nana Ginny and her whole family has welcomed us into their family, me, when I was about Sabina's age, when I was five, and I have brothers and sisters, and we have, who are our favorite cousins? Because of Nana Ginny. Gavin and Ryland and Mason. Gavin, Ryland, and Mason. So the love is strong, and we love our moms, and we know Mike does too, right? Uh-huh. Good job. Sabina's our little junior reporter, isn't she? Hey, don't forget, you can watch Valley Spotlight on a lot of different platforms and locations here on this channel, WBCB, ValleySpotlight.com, Roku Channel, Apple TV, places like that. As we leave you today, we just want to remind you that yes, 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 we do. We've got spirit. How about you? No school, but Youngstown State still has spirit. And we thought we'd end today's show with the singing of the YSU alma mater. Have a great day, everybody. All hail to the If you like this video, subscribe to Valley Spotlight on YouTube and be sure to click on the notifications bell so you know when we've got some new stuff. You also can like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and subscribe to us on Vimeo or our Roku channel.